Hi there, I'm Sean Fitzgerald from the Toronto Suns Entertainment Department, and I'm here with Bruce Kirkland. How are you, Bruce? Hey, pleasure. Good to see you. Now, Bruce has covered the Academy Awards for many, many, many years. Now, do you have one or two memories that stick out, perhaps from the first time that you covered it, for example? Hey, the first time was 1981, for the movies of 1980. Wow. And Robert Redford is up there on the podium in the press room. Yeah. You know, answering our questions and doing his thing in his low-key way, minimalist way. And then I feel this nudge at my left elbow and I look and there's this guy holding a statue. And he looks up at me and says, do you know what I'm supposed to do? It's Robert De Niro. He just won Best Actor for Raging Bull. He's asking me what he's supposed to do. In the old days of the Oscars, much more relaxed, casual, etc. Yeah, like it didn't feel like now it feels like it, maybe it's all spectacle. Like, do you feel like you know your years covering it that there have been some maybe more human elements? You're absolutely right. Most of the time it is absolute spectacle. But every once in a while you just feel like this rush of emotion and, and there is a human touch. Okay. I'll give you a couple examples. Sure, One of them yeah. is in hindsight, Philip Seymour Hoffman with a drink in his hand winning for uh, Capote Best Actor, just being himself in such an extraordinary way. But now, of course, we see the tragedy in his life. Mm -hmm. And then another time, of course, the posthumous one that was given to uh, Heath Ledger. For and the his dark family night. is there for The Dark Knight. His family is accepting it. And we just, we actually, all we cynical uh, media types, we cried. Yeah. It just brought that element to it, you're right. Now let's transition a bit to you know, one of the bigger categories, Best Director. Now what are your thoughts on that? Who, who's the front runner there? Uh, I think it's Alfonso Cuaron. Uh, he did an amazing job with Gravity. Technical Marvel. Technical Marvel, done kind of seat of the pants. He described to me during the uh, festival exactly how they did some of those special effects. It really was making it up as you get, well, go along. You and know? he didn't really have a big budget, No, it's not right? like uh, Batman Returns and he has, you know, 150 or $200 million to, uh, to do that kind of, uh, you know, production. Right, he right. He had to re literally make it up and did an amazing job. And yet, I'm not sure if I would give him the Oscar if I was the voter. Steve McQueen, 12 Years a Slave, created a movie that's for all time. I mean, this is an historical epic that deserves to be seen for decades. I hear you. Now that kind of transitions to our next category, best picture, the one that everyone's tuning in for, and the one that you got to stay up for. Who do you think the front runner is there? Like, what, what are you betting on? Well, actually, it was 12 Years a Slave, and that would, again, get my vote. Mm -hmm, However, mm -hmm. I think that the momentum for it is fading. And there's a kind of dynamic involved in the lead up to the voting procedures of the Academy where it's almost like a horse race and you feel some horses got out in front too soon and they just can't keep their pace. It has nothing to do with the quality of the films. It has to do with the perception of their importance within the voting structure. That's a good point. And now I'm beginning to think that gravity is right there and maybe even American Hustle will sneak through. Split, split the vote and be by a nose at the end best picture and everybody everybody will go oh my god this is amazing you know i was a big fan of that film so i'll be happy uh, if it wins to be honest with you now bruce for all the years that you've covered it for us i'd like to present you with this fake award <laughs> uh, <laughs> so hope you enjoy thanks for joining us i really appreciate it enjoy the show take care